tis the season for ugly sweater contests. But here on Mobile Club Maker, we're gonna be doing an ugly golf club contest. So let's go. Hi everyone, welcome to the Mobile Club Maker. I'm AJ, I hope you're having a wonderful holiday season. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at some of those uh, not so beautiful golf clubs. The little bit weird, the little bit off, a little bit too much function over form. But we're gonna break these down into four different categories. We've got drivers, irons, wedges, putters. And I'm gonna be giving you my top three picks in each of these categories. At the end of this, I'd love all of you to go down in the comments and tell me what you think is the, the best of the worst or the worst of the best, the, the ugliest of the bunch. And then once we get all that, we're gonna go try and find all these clubs. I'm gonna go buy them, put together sort of a best of ugly golf club set, and we're gonna go play some golf with it. So I think it'll be a good sort of video series. Okay, so before we get into this, I just wanna give my only sort of uh, prerequisite for any of the choices I made, which was they had to be golf clubs that you could buy at some point in time in a retail golf store. So it had to be something that you could go into a golf store and find at least at some point in time. So infomercial only golf clubs are not going to be on the list. So I apologize up front, the Air Hammer, the Hammer X, the Hammer Driver, uh, they are not gonna make it onto the list. Can I get a pow? Nice. Now that being said, let's get right into the drivers. So number one on the list of ugliest golf clubs, this is one that always makes it onto lists talking about unique looking golf clubs, and that is the Nike Sasquatch Sumo 2 driver. This was the first square headed driver to come to market. It was big, it was uh, obnoxious, ostentatious, whatever you want to call it. It was a big footprint. It had a massive head on it. It had a black and gray color scheme on the top, but on the bottom, bright yellow. So it was very easy to spot. And as strange and unique as it was to look at, the sound that it produced was really second to none. Basically think of throwing tin cans into a big metal garbage can. That's kind of the sound you were getting. You could hear this golf club five holes away if someone was hitting it. It was really, every bit as loud as it was loud to look at. So one on our list, Nike Sasquatch Sumo 2 driver. Okay, number two on our list, and you may have never heard of this driver, you may have never seen this driver before, but it is the Wilson Invex driver. And you can see right here why it's on the list. You have a driver that really looks a lot like a flying saucer. You've got the inset hosel, where the hosel is actually stuck further into the head Supposedly it was supposed to make this golf club, I guess, more stable or something like that. But having seen this club in person, whereas a driver should really hopefully instill confidence that you're gonna be able to hit it straight and far. When you set up with this golf club, you were just praying that it would find the fairway because you really had no idea where it was going, at least in my opinion. All that being said, this was won or used to win a British Open or an Open Championship by John Daly. So. It clearly worked for him, but it is on our list, the second option of the ugliest driver. Okay, last up in the driver category, this driver really answers the question, what would it look like if transformers could turn into golf clubs? This is the Bridgestone J815 driver. This is actually a more current model. I think basically around 2015 is when it came out and you can still find them new. So. You may be online, you may see this driver and it may just show you the picture of the sole and you'd think, hey, that looks pretty good. It looks like a good traditional shape. Color scheme doesn't seem like anything too wild. You maybe buy, you bring it home, you take it out of the box, you set it behind the ball and then you're greeted with that. Yeah, that is a unique paint job to say the least. It is such a unique paint job and I think they had so little confidence in it that they also made this driver in black because well, let's face it, it's on this list and I think you see why. Again, all that being said, this driver is still currently in the bag of Matt Kuchar. So beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but for us, it's on the list as our third choice for ugly driver. Okay, next up, we're going into the irons. And I just picked all these irons based on their appearance, but in a weird sort of coincidence, they are all basically from the same 
two year period. All these irons came out within a year and a half of each other basically. So I don't know exactly what was going on then, but something was clearly happening to make golf club designers really go pretty far outside the box. Okay, the first iron on our list. This is the Cleveland VAS 792 iron. This really is sort of what happens if you go on an acid trip and then start designing golf clubs. I mean, this thing is way out there. By far, the most unique iron I think has ever been produced. You've got, again, you've got sort of like the Wilson driver, you've got an inset hosel. So the hosel is stuck much closer in on the face the entire cavity back, the entire design, very sort of jelly beanish looking, not helped by the fact that it has a bright purple emblem on the back. And also, if you got them in graphite, they came with bright purple shafts. So you could see these golf clubs from 100 yards away. Okay, next up in irons, the Fila Latitude Iron. Now, this club you may not be as familiar with possibly because it was overshadowed by the Cleveland and some other ones, possibly just because it was Fila and it wasn't as big of a name in golf, but this definitely belongs on our list. As you can see here, this is to my knowledge one of the only irons in the last 25 years that has a face forward design. So whereas most golf clubs utilize offset where the face of the club is set behind the hosel, Fila went the opposite direction and put the face in front of the hosel. So it almost looks more like a, a driver when you look at the face of it setting up, but no, it's an iron. It's also got a very unique sole design. The whole thing, sort of blocky, sort of chunky, but again, that face forward design is really the thing that when you set it up behind the ball, just looked strange. Okay, the third club on our list, and this was probably the most uh, popular of the three that we're gonna be talking about today, and that is the Ping Zing 2. So the Ping Zing iron was incredibly popular, definitely had a unique look to it, debatably somewhat ugly. But the Ping Zing 2 took that look and really just sort of exaggerated everything a little more. Kind of like all the design engineers sort of started sticking stuff onto the back of the club to get it where they wanted it to be, but then nobody decided to go back and smooth it out, round it off, try and make it look a little more cosmetically pleasing. So it's a very sort of strange looking golf club. You pair that with uh, some of the most obnoxiously large logoing or graphics on the back of that cavity that you will ever find. That Ping Zing 2 is just bold and bright and just obnoxious. The last thing about these irons is they had all the numbers, not only on the sole of the club, but they also put the club number on the face. And while maybe if it was small, tiny, inconspicuous, I wouldn't really notice it and be bothered by it, in these irons, it was big, just like everything else, and definitely a big distraction, I think. So this iron, again, definitely deserves its place on our list of ugly golf irons. Okay, wedges. First up, again, this club is sort of one of those iconic, ugly golf clubs, and that is the Alien Wedge whether it's the completely sort of round face on it, the big, giant, clunky sole, the fact that it didn't actually have grooves but instead just had dots all over the face, this club definitely made a statement. Now, as weird, as strange looking as it was, it was incredibly popular and they are still making versions of the Alien Wedge today. But the original Alien Wedge, the thing that started it all off, as you can see, was definitely different, definitely unique, and debatably quite ugly and perfect for our list of ugly golf clubs. Okay, the second wedge on our list, and this is a lot like one of the other irons we've already talked about because it has a face forward design, and that is the F2 wedge. Now the F2 wedge, I think really began as a infomercial type club and then made its way into golf retail. But again, you can see this has that face forward design. I think they call it sort of an anti-shank design, something like that. But it is definitely very unique to look at with that face sitting in front of the hosel. Definitely a little bit strange when you compare it to all the other golf clubs out there. It would definitely stick out and not really a surprise that I'd put it on this list of ugly golf clubs. Okay, the last wedge on our list, and this is in this case, I had to go back to one of the irons that we already had on the list because the wedge in this case 
is every bit as weird looking, if not more, and that is the Ping Zing 2. Again, you've got all the same things that we've already touched on, the design, the look, the writing, the graphics on the back, and you've got that big letter, the S or the L, right there on the face. And as distracting as that is when you're looking down at, say, a flatter face club, like a five iron or a six iron, when you get all the way to a wedge, that letter is just staring you right in the face. Super distracting, and I think definitely this golf club belongs on our list. Okay, last up is the putters, and I realize that putters, there are probably more different, weird, unique looking putters than any other type of golf club out there. If you ask 10 different people what the weirdest or ugliest putter is, you might get 10 completely different answers every time. So these are my top ones, but again, there are a lot of choices when it comes to putters. The first is the Nike Method Concept Putter. And at first look, you would think, yeah, this putter isn't too bad looking, but it was really poorly received. And I think a lot of that came down to the fact that it's really not symmetrical in any way. Most putters, if you draw a line right through the face, the top half and the bottom half are gonna look pretty similar. This putter, none of that. The top, very different, much more rounded, the bottom much more tapered, and it just made for a very unusual looking putter that people had a hard time lining up, hard time making a good, smooth, back and forth stroke with. And for that reason, it definitely made it onto our list of ugliest golf club options. Okay, next putter up is the Axis One Umbra. And this putter, it's a currently available putter, but it is just a very, just confusing putter. It doesn't matter how I look at it, what angle I look at it from. There's just a lot of lines and angles and things sticking off in weird directions. And it is just an incredibly distracting looking putter. I have never seen a putter with quite as much going on as this putter. Okay, the last putter on our list, another iconic odd golf club, and that is the Ping Doc 17 putter. This putter was big, and when I say big, it is by far, to my knowledge, the biggest putter that's ever been made. The head on this putter was basically like taking half of a dinner plate and putting a stick on one side of it and putting with it. It was massive. And as big as the putter was, the head cover was equally as big. It was like an oven mitt. Now there's nothing objectionable about the design of it. I think the look of it overall is very good, but the size of it is just so ridiculously huge that it just became a joke if you ever picked one up. No one really picked one up and thought, oh yeah, I like, I like the looks of this. Not to mention, I don't even know how you carry one of these in your golf bag. I think you'd need a second golf bag just to carry one of these putters because they were so huge. So because of that, because of just the ridiculous, obnoxious size of this putter, it definitely makes it onto the list of ugliest putters. Okay, so there is my list in the four different categories of drivers, irons, wedges, and putters. My top three choices in each one. Now, I would love to have you guys all go down below in the comments and let me know your thoughts. Which of these in each of the categories do you think is the ugliest of the bunch? And again, once we get enough responses, I'm gonna go find all these golf clubs and put together a best of or a worst of ugly golf bag and we're gonna go play some golf with it. So I think that will definitely be fun. Also, if there's a really ugly golf club that you think I missed, definitely let me know about that down in the comments below. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please go down below, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you'll be alerted when I post new videos. You can find me on Patreon if you wanna support me there. You can find me at AJ Golf, and you can also find me on Instagram at Mobile Clubmaker. Happy holidays, we'll see you again soon, bye.